Release the Dogs is the eighth episode of the fourth season of Two and a Half Men. This is directed by Gary Harverson, and as always, there will be spoilers from now as I go through the episode chronologically and share some thoughts. I quite like the episode. It's definitely not a personal favourite. I feel like we needed maybe a little bit more variety. It also wasn't the most funny. But we do have some pretty good moments. Starts off with Alan in the kitchen. Very dramatic beginning, actually. He's in the kitchen. He spills hot milk on himself. And Charlie comes in. He hears him making noises because he's spilled the milk. He thinks it's something else. And it turns out Alan just is having difficulty sleeping. Charlie first suggests sex. And then he suggests exercise. So Alan decides to go for a jog down to the pier and back to burn off some excess energy. And while he does that... Somebody runs past him in the opposite direction. And the next thing we know, the helicopter is beaming its light down to him. They think that he is the culprit. Clearly somebody has done something. And they think it's Alan. So he decides to show them where the other person is. And obviously up in the helicopter, they can't hear what he's saying. They they end up releasing the dogs. I will say, whenever they said release the dogs, all I could hear was release the hounds. And it just doesn't have the same ring to it as Mr. Burns. And the police end up dropping Alan off home. It's a very dramatic start. We're then in the kitchen. They're having dinner. Alan is really cranky. He establishes he hasn't slept in two days. And Jake then says he wants to go home to his mother's because he wants to see his friend. And here we have another example of Jake starting to really grow up. And I I don't remember this, but I, I kind of imagine I would have been the same way. You get to a certain age where you'd rather be with your friends than with your parents. I feel like that's inevitable. And, and in, in this season, we really do see Jake starting to grow up quite a lot. And then Alan, it turns out Alan goes to wake Charlie up to watch Jake and his friend. His friend actually came over. So, best of both worlds, Jake gets to spend time with his father and also his friend. Alan goes to see Dr. Freeman. I feel like it's been a while since we've seen Dr. Freeman. I could be wrong, but I really like the character. And they end up talking about Charlie. And I don't know if I believe this would be the cause of Alan's insomnia, but I would love for somebody to prove me wrong and say that actually this could be the case. Because they come to the conclusion that... As Alan puts it, his internal contradiction is the source of the insomnia. And this is this contradiction with how he feels towards Charlie and how Charlie just has this really easy life and gets everything handed to him, at least it seems. And Alan seems to think, yes, if he just confronts this this feeling, then it will cure his insomnia. And I don't I don't buy into that in the slightest, but I'll come back to that in a little bit. We then see Jake and his friend Taylor. Uh, She's played by Melanie Abramoff. And they're sitting on the sofa with their laptops chatting to each other on Instant Messenger or something similar, which just... I I miss MSN. I don't think they were on MSN, but it made me really miss MSN. I feel like it's time for MSN to make a comeback. I am talking about MSN Messenger or Windows Live Messenger. I, I, I feel like it was replaced by Facebook. People started to message on Facebook instead. But I feel like... It's due a comeback. This is irrelevant to my enjoyment of the episode. But that, it just, it brought that back to me. So I thought that was rather good fun. And Taylor's mother then comes to pick her up. And Jake pleads with Charlie to not hit on Taylor's mother. And Charlie agrees. And then he opens the door, realizes Taylor's mother is very attractive and breaks that promise. Not a good luck for Charlie. And Jake is really annoyed by this. So Charlie comes up with a compromise, which isn't acceptable, but he tells Jake, I'll give up Taylor's mom in exchange for you washing my car once a week for the next month. That's not how this should go, Charlie. You broke a promise. You're in the wrong. You don't give Jake a compromise. But nevertheless, Jake agrees. And I'm really surprised, actually. Well, am I? I was going to say I'm surprised Charlie trusted Jake with washing his car. But at the same time, if it means he gets sex with the hot woman, maybe that's a compromise he's willing to make. And Alan then comes in and tells Charlie what happened at the therapy session. The conversation flowed really well. Nobody got angry. Nobody got annoyed at each other or anything. It was just a nice conversation. Well, maybe nice is not the right word, but it was a a conversation between two brothers addressing an important topic. And I was really surprised nobody got overly emotional. 
And then we do find out later on, Alan still has difficulty sleeping. So it didn't fix things. Personally, I wasn't expecting it to. But again, if somebody has had a similar experience and wants to tell me that actually that could cause insomnia, I'm willing to listen to that. Charlie then comes home in the final scene and Jake is waiting up for him. He's clearly been on a date with Taylor's mother. And Jake knows this for a fact because Taylor emailed Jake photos of Charlie's car outside their house and of Charlie kissing her mother. And Jake has every right to be annoyed, not just because Charlie once again broke a promise, but because he'd already washed his car. So Charlie doesn't look the best in this episode. But Jake gets his own back. Charlie opens a door and he gets gunged. He gets slimed with this bright green slime and Jake makes a run for it. And <laughs> I did like this moment. Charlie goes after him and jumps down onto the beach, but he lands with his face in the sand. And obviously because he's covered in this slime, that's just going to cling to him. And once again, the helicopter beams down and sees Charlie. And it's a pretty decent way to end things. It's not my favourite episode. It's maybe not the funniest, but I did enjoy it. Personal highlights would be the scene with Dr. Freeman, just because I like the character I really like. I like her attitude, not in real life, but in the episode or in the show, I like her attitude. And definitely Jake getting his own back on Charlie because he had every right to do that. And also reminding me of the days of MSN Messenger because I miss it. I miss it truly. Although that being said, I don't really like to talk to people that much, so maybe I wouldn't maybe I wouldn't like it anymore. I still think it should make a comeback. Either way, this episode is maybe not the best, maybe not the strongest, but Release the Dogs is still a pretty decent episode of Two and a Half Men. <laughs>